So this is Hermes. I got Hermes in uh, February of 2011 off of Craigslist. And he was very much a... Hey, sweetie. He was very much a rescue. Um, his conditions were... <sighs> so I showed up at the, the guy's house. He was advertising a... Um, and I don't remember, he was either four or five years old at the time. Um, but an adult, normal boa, uh, for $50 on Craigslist. And, and no picture, nothing, but um, I wanted to go check him out. I was very much looking to get a boa, and I, I knew that I wanted to get one that was in need of help. So, excuse the mess, by the way. So, I came in here this morning... And uh, that's his cage up there. You can see it is very much a mess. He dumped his water, which is like the third time he's done this in in the past two or three months. And it's not okay. He seems quite proud of it, though. He was very happy when I opened up his cage this morning to discover that. But, so now we're out and we're getting exercise. And... So anyway, so I show up. Um, I brought a friend with me and I show up at this guy's house and... He was keeping Hermes in a, uh, like one of those 55 gallon plastic tote containers. And he had a couple holes in the top uh, cut out and the, even the jagged edges. It was literally like he had put a knife through the top lid just to poke some air holes in. And then the jagged edges were still, um, you know, down. So Hermes easily could have been hurting himself on just the edges of the sharp plastic that were inside the lid of the container. Anyway, so he had a, one of those really old, you haven't seen them since probably like the 80s. It was like a hot water bag. Um, they're like red and you just fill them up with, with uh, hot water and they, they can usually maintain that heat for a couple hours, but that was how he was heating the cage. And when I felt it, I mean, it was ice cold. So it was obvious he hadn't done that in a while. And and, uh, yeah, so he just explained that, you know, he, rather than getting him a bigger cage, which he needed, because before he had been keeping him in an aquarium, which is sadly very typical of people to do, is to keep boas in aquariums, which is just not okay. What are you doing? Yeah, that's your stuff. Does it smell like you? He's just smelling it like crazy. Hermes. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, he had, it, basically the guy was saying that instead of getting his boa that he'd had, he claimed he had had him since a baby, um, rather than get him a new, bigger cage, he was just going to sell him. So, um, at the time, um, he had several pretty fresh, wounds along his back. Let's see here. It's probably going to be difficult to actually see. So there's one right here. Let's see if I can get the light. You just see just a little bit of discoloration right there. I can get it to focus better. There we go. A little bit of discoloration. This was a wound. Um, his scales actually grew back, thankfully. Usually they don't or they won't grow quite right. They'll just try to like fill in, but his scales did grow back on that particular one. Um, he has another uh, somewhere in this vicinity. It's just the lighting's really bad right now, so you can't really tell, but you can definitely feel them when you're, you know, running your fingers down them, and then all of a sudden you'll come across like a really rough patch, and that's where he had had those wounds, and they were, as I said, they were very fresh when, when I got him. Okay. <laughs> Uh, or the, the, uh, new thermostat, well, not terribly new, but the thermostat I've got, anytime there's an error code, which happens, like, maybe twice a day, um, it'll flash the lights that I have hooked up, um, and it also reads, like, you know, error code, number, 
whatever the number is, just to alert us. Uh, what we figured out that it is, it's actually an electrical issue and nothing to do with the thermostat, nothing to do with the heating. It's the electrical of our actual home. Um, because we can actually make it, we can trigger it to happen if we turn on the fan in the bathroom that's on the other side of that wall right there. And it, it will trigger that to happen. So, anywho. Uh, so he's got the wounds down, running down his back. And um, another very obvious issue was his tail here. So, he um, he explained that the tail had been bitten off. So he's actually missing several inches of tail. Um, it's okay, baby. It's okay. He is not great with having his tail messed with. I think it's just something that still bothers him. But yeah, so the guy explained that um, he would feed him live rats. Well, rats are um, notorious for defending themselves. And can I just... This is just such a not pretty spot for you buddy can we move you back out into the open perhaps what do you think no this is mine all of this is mine you're so cute look at your little face so yeah the, the rat had bit off his tail and uh at a, in another instance a rat had chewed off his nose. That's why it looks like this. Hi. <laughs> Are we gonna come crawl on mom now? That's fine. Oh, yeah. Come on. There we go. Um, it also, because of the damage that was done, it, it leads to him having very audible uh, breathing. I'm not sure if it can be heard in the video itself, but it basically just sounds like a psh, psh, every time he exhales. So uh, it is not a respiratory infection. Um, it's just something that he has. There's no mucus or anything. It's just kind of like um, sometimes snakes will shed a little bit funny and maybe a little bit of stuck skin will remain like in their nostril. And when they exhale, they'll hear like a whistle. It's kind of like that, but it's much more of a whoosh than a whistle. And it's just because so much damage was done right there by his um, nostrils. You know, it, it basically bit off the end of his nose. So he had, as I said, th and that was kind of a little bit of an older one. He said that was probably about a year old. Same with the tail. Um, it was almost completely healed by the time I got him. But the several bites on his back uh, along his spine, those were very fresh. Uh, probably just a few months old. So I definitely got him out of there. Um, I also, he threw in, like, practically as I was leaving, the guy threw in a um, normal ball python as well. Uh, I was able to find her a new home right away. She was in really good health. Um, he just didn't want her. So he just threw her in into the same container, and I just, I wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. Um, they were my my first ball python and my first boa constrictor. Um, Hermes um, had a very clear fear of rats, which is something that I had never heard of before, but he definitely did. Um, I couldn't get him to eat for several months because, and I was offering him, right away I was offering him frozen thought. I would never do live rats. What's he doing? What's he doing? I got smells on me too. Yes. <laughs> You're so silly. You look so little. You are not little, buddy. You are very not little. So he um he would shy away anytime I tried to feed him the live or the frozen thawed rats. And eventually I, I'm and I'm talking when he when I say shied away, I'm talking he full on was hiding his head underneath himself and like just very clearly fearful and um so finally I figured out that if I would just lay the rat in his cage um and like you know drape a towel over the front and just give him complete solitude and he would go eventually and eat the rat 
Um, and I did observe it one time. He would like, I mean, it took him hours to like determine that, yep, it's dead. It's not moving. We're good. It's not going to hurt me. It was just heartbreaking to watch that though, but I was really glad that we were able to overcome it. And now he eats great. In fact, in the past year or so, I've had him, as I said, I've had him since 2011. So I've had him for over five years now. Um, in just this past year, I've actually gotten him to uh, full on strike and coil, um, maybe like four or five of his meals. But there are times that I think maybe he's just a little bit more on edge and he, he completely gets freaked out by them and he'll go and hide and I have to lay the rat in there and then by the next morning he's eating it. You can't get in there. Yeah, so Hermes, um, I'd say he's he's probably nine years old if I if I had to guess. So he's definitely full grown. Um, he hasn't put on any length since I got him, but I definitely got him up to an appropriate weight. Uh, last time I weighed him, he would have been probably nineteen pounds, but it's been quite a while, like almost a year since I weighed him. So, um, hey, sweetie. And last time I measured him, he would have been probably about seven two, seven foot two inches. Hi. <laughs> She's moving around so much. I really do think that you tip your water on purpose so that you get some outside time and it forces me to do a complete clean out of your cage. Yeah, I'll show you what he did here. It's just totally wet. All of this is just completely saturated. And thankfully, Aspen is extremely absorbent. So it's not like there's standing water in there, but this is all, all of it has to be cleaned out like completely. And any rip down is uh, thermometer and hygrometer. Yeah, it still is reading 94% humidity in here. So. I'll probably just have to like completely reroute everything because it looks like he's like peeling all this off. <sighs> Need to get some gorilla tape up in here. But yeah, so that'll be fun to get to clean out. And you see, there's like actual water on the door. It was very, I mean, it was like steamy in there when I first came in. so little. What do you say we come away from this spot? Would it, does it take me having to move everything for that to happen? Huh? Hey. Hi. Come on. Come on. Come out of your corner, dude. Oh my gosh, it's hard to do one-handed. Why? Why? Fine. Fine. Okay. One-handed, I can't negotiate with a nearly 20-pound adult boa. They're pure muscle at this age. And he's stubborn. He wants to check out things, and I'm just going to let him. I'm going to take your log. Like, I never realize how many things there are in this room for them to get into until they find it. You're like a child. Hey. Hey. Come here. Yeah, you can, I mean, I can't 
even come close to wrapping my hand around. Like, I can get his sides and to the floor on both sides, but he's still got his entire belly then. And this is not even close to his widest point. His widest point is, like, down here. He's a big guy. I think, um, considering how seldomly he was eating at his old home, um, it probably stunted his growth quite a bit. He's not nearly as big as a lot of adult boas can get. But he's he's in great health. Um, he's got this just perfect square body and he's just pure muscle. Urgh. You know, you don't feel any bone, you know, running along his spine here. Can't feel any spine at all. So he is he's exactly where he's supposed to be. Where are you going? He's my baby. He was my my first boa. He's look at that tail. It took me probably about two years before he'd let me even get anywhere near his tail. Like I you know, working my way up here and eventually all the way down. And he just, I mean, I'm talking he would freak out if I touched anywhere near his tail. Oh, I think he found the girls. Do you smell girls, Hermes? That's sunny in there. There she is, right there. <laughs> Alright, well I'm going to clean your cage so you can get back and you can sleep because I know right now it is sleeping time. Alright, well thank you for watching everyone. I was trying to clean it out, and all of a sudden, here he was. <sighs> Hi. It's dirty still. Buddy, now we're going to have to take a bath. better you'll get your other stuff back as soon as they're done drying <laughs>